How many of you guys have been in a situation where you had an options contract or a stock and equity play, and it was a, you put in a stop loss or you put in a sell order, and it was just about to get there and start shooting up, shooting up, shooting up, and you said, you know what, let me just cancel it, and then and then when it goes higher, I'll put another one, and then it gets to your sell order, goes a little bit higher, and then tanks all the way down, and then you're sitting there looking at a loss, a huge loss, when if you didn't touch it, it would have sold for you and you'd have walked with profit. How do you find stock ideas? They're not stock ideas. Um, I, I go in the morning and I look at a lot of things. I look at, uh, I look at you know, financial news, you know, news about the vaccine, news about the, the virus, shutdowns, economic data, um, stimulus news, metals, dollar, that whole nine yards. Then I start breaking down sectors. I look at big stocks. I look at who's dropping, where are they dropping, why are they dropping, uh, is it knee jerk? Like, for example, I'll give you Walgreens, for example. Amazon announced they're, they're going to get into uh, deliveries of, of pharmaceuticals, right? CVS, Rite Aid, GoodRx, Walgreens all died. But I was like, cool. That's a knee jerk oversell reaction to something that's going to take two to three years at minimum, even if they can get the infrastructure in. They're not going to do scheduled drugs. And older people are not going to use Amazon Prime for that shit, right? They're going to stick to their prescriptions and, and the doctors, right? So is that a knee-jerk reaction? Absolutely, right? So that's a buy-the-dip opportunity because it's not that these companies did anything wrong. It's because someone else is taking market space away from them, but it's a long time from now. So that means that that drop is not, is not in my opinion, is not justified. So I buy more shares, I'm just giving a couple examples. There's other things like uh, that we talk about with with like Ericsson, right? Like I shared with you guys in Discord yesterday, right? Like I, I watch Ericsson because I think Ericsson, I have for a while, believe that Ericsson is going to be the 5G infrastructure monster down the road. So I keep up with all the contracts they get. I showed you guys that website yesterday that showed you all the contracts for 5G infrastructure Ericsson has around the world. It's insane. And they just keep adding to it, right? I keep up with these things. I do other things. I'll give you an example, right? Chipotle, top stock. I love Chipotle, okay? Not like personally, I hate Chipotle, but Chipotle, Becky stock, okay? Chipotle lane is going to be huge. They are ready for COVID and post-COVID. Um, adding brisket, bringing something else in, more sales. They're testing things that work. They're continuing to innovate even though, uh, you know, we're having a middle of a, of a pandemic. Their last earnings, their sales were through the roof digital sales were up like 150 percent but what's holding them back right now what is holding back chipotle right now deliveries they're spending an ungodly amount in deliveries but once covid is over Those, those, those delivery costs are going to get cut down significantly. And with Chipotle Lane opening up at 62, now 64 cities, locations, and it just can, and with it just going to continue, what does that mean? Chipotle Lane, people that are freaked out about COVID coming out of it, you get to digitally order now and go into a drive through lane, put in your digital number, and they have the food ready for you. And then today they get announced as, as, as the best idea of 2021 put on that list. How did you get good at this? I'm not, I, I wouldn't say I'm good at it. I would say, um, I, I, I've been doing this a very long time and I've developed my own strategy, which most people think is shit. I get, um, these, uh, other trading communities coming in saying you're not a proper trader, uh, and I respect that. I don't respect that. Fuck them. But I respect the idea that I am unconventional. And that's why I don't What's tell people to trade the way I do. Brokers. Why do they say you're not conventional? Because there is there is two ways of trading out there. Three ways. One is technical analysis. You trade simply off of RSI, MACD, Bollinger Bands, uh, uh, you know, whatever. There's fundamental trading. Well, this company is profitable or not profitable, and therefore it should go up or should go down. And then there's momentum trading. I do stuff like monetizing outrage culture. Uh, I do things like uh, getting ahead of things, you know, buy the rumor, sell the news. I get in ahead of uh, of shifts, cy cyclical rotations, um, buying dips of, of things that were uh, oversold. Uh, you know, they're, they're, I, I do things differently. I, I trade off the news. People don't like it. 
but it's fine. It works for me. I don't recommend it for everyone. I don't recommend it to anyone. That's why I don't sell courses or tell people what they should do because it works for me. It may not work for you. I left the party too early. How do you watch the charts all day and manage to hold stuff for years? Remember how I told you in this video right here, the, the psychology behind multiple trading accounts? That's the same thing. Okay, the psychology behind multiple trading accounts. It is the whole thing. My long-term investment portfolio, I may not even open up for a day or two. So I don't look at those because I don't care. If they're long-term, they're long-term. And because I don't look at it, I'm not focusing on it. So if it's going down today, I don't care. If it goes up today, I don't care. So that's the whole point of it is having something that's out of sight, out of mind. Your trading account is different. That's the one that you actively look at every day. It's the same thing I tell you guys that have uh, uh, um, a problem controlling your spending, right? Have a different bank or a different account for savings than checking. So when you open up your bank account on your phone or whatever, you put 95% of your money in your savings account or you know, if you're emergency fund in a different bank or a different app or whatever. And that way, when you open up your checking account, you only see a certain amount of money and your psychology, your brain starts to, 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 to train your brain. Hey, that's all the money I have. And that makes you spend less because here's the thing. If you're on the fence about spending something you don't really need and you see $10,000 in your bank account, you're going to say to yourself, Oh, I got 10 grand. That's nothing. It's only 500 bucks. But if you take 9,000 of that, put it in your savings or your emergency fund account and you put it in a different thing, when you open up the app, it only shows 1,000. All of a sudden, you're like, wow, I only have $1,000. That's 500. That's 50% of my money. Yeah, I probably better not do that. You literally train your brain that way. And it's the same thing with trading. I have a completely different brokerage for my long-term hold, long-term portfolio than I do my trading account. I cannot do it because I'll make decisions based on the idea that I have more money and double down into losing positions or change one position to another because I, I don't have the money there. But just like with anything, the longer you're in it, the more experience you get in it, the more and more you're able to separate emotions. So many people in here who are new to this don't have a trading journal. They don't go into trades with an absolute plan before they go in. They just go in and wing it. And that's the difference. You've got to let the computer. Nowadays, you don't even have to watch it. You can literally set a buy order and a stop loss order or a sell order. And walk away. Let the computer take the emotions from you. How many of you guys, how many of you guys have been in a situation where you had an options contract or a stock and equity play, and it was a, you put in a stop loss or you put in a sell order, and it was just about to get there and it started shooting up, shooting up, shooting up, and you said, fuck, fuck, you know what? Let me just cancel it. And then, and then when it goes higher, I'll put another one. And then it gets to your sell order, goes a little bit higher, and then tanks all the way down. And then you're sitting there looking at a loss, a huge loss, when if you didn't touch it, it would have sold for you and you would have walked with profit. Stop doing that. The amount of times that you'll continue to make more money versus it going up and then you not setting another one or, or getting greedy and trying to squeeze out a couple more dollars and then it falling down will cost you 10 times more money than you'll make. Let the computer take it from you. Emotions will destroy you more than anything in the stock market. Because you're competing against fucking computer programs who don't have feelings. How do you keep a trading journal? Um, you just uh, get an Excel sheet out if you need to. Okay? And in that, you're going to write down things like symbol. Okay? And then you can put whatever you want. What the symbol is, price, and then down here, you're going to put a uh, reason. Okay, why am I into that symbol, and what price did I buy it in? And then you can write anything else you want, and then you can put sell. And then you'll see if you have it set up with, the, uh, you could put wins, loss, whatever. Then, okay, outcome, was I right, wrong, okay, and then what did I learn, okay? Now, under this... You write it down. For example, I'll give you a great one right now. Watch this. Walmart, 12, 31, 150, call. Reason, retail, slash, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. If I sold right now, okay, what did I buy it at? I bought it at, uh, okay, and uh, let's just say 150, call, okay, and then price, uh, as of right now, what, 387, okay? Let's say I sold right now, and these are going for 322 right now, 
Okay? Outcome? L. Was I right or wrong? I was right. Okay? Initially. But I can't put that there. What did I learn? I should have stuck to my rule of 20% gain and sell. Okay? Because I was up 35%. Okay? Now... Let's say, and I'm just giving an example. You can do it however however you want to do it, right? All right? I was wrong. I was right initially, right? I'm just, I'm just writing this down. The outcome was a loss. Was I right about the reasoning why I got into it? Was I right? Was, was I right that the price was going to go up? Or I could put in wrong. I could put in wrong here. It doesn't matter. You, you do this how you want to do this. We'll call it, we'll just, just for the sake of this, we'll call it uh, wrong. Okay. But I like to, I like to, I like to bring it to say, I like to sell that I was right because I made the right decision. I made the right play, but I screwed up and that's what I'm going to write here, right? So what is it wrong? I should have stuck to my rule of 20% gain and sell. Should have, right? I mean, I've still got a month, so I'm not concerned right off the bat. This is a long date option, but I should have, right? I could have re-entered again. So imagine if I bought it, sold it for 20% gain. Now it's down 15%. I could have bought twice as much as before and gone again with the profits, right? So let's say that's the case. And let's say you write this journal down and, and down here should have 20%, right? And then down here, okay, as you're getting down here. At some point, you're going to notice that you have one thing in common, right? Right? All of these ones, you were up. You were up, you were up, you were up, you were up, but you sold for an L. So if you have an L, right? But at some point you were up 20%, you have a rule to sell 20% and you don't stick to it. Guess what? It's like a Venn diagram. Now you know where you're where to fix. What do I fix? This is what you need to fix. Stick to your rule or make a rule. You don't have that rule? Hey, I was up 30% and I ended up losing money. I was up 35% and ended up losing money. I was up 40% and ended up losing money. Okay, I need to start selling when I'm profitable. Or I got in, you, let's say the L, right? Okay, and then the reason you got in There you go. Now you fixed your problem. Okay? That's what a trading journal is about. You are documenting your journey and finding out what works and what doesn't. This, obviously, you don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. You can develop your own trading journal. You can ask people in this community all the time. Okay? But I'm just saying is, is that that is how you are going to find where you're making mistakes. In this case, your mistake was... Your research was based off of something you saw on a website. In this case, you let your emotions drive the play rather than 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 than, than sticking to a, a a set number. So if I keep getting W's from shadow trading you, I should keep doing it. <laughs> oh God! Fuck you! God damn it! Oh my God! Yes, you're doing conditional probability. Yay! Hi, Martini. How you doing? I know, Martini, but I've been sitting here for 20 minutes trying to explain to these guys. They're, they're like, well, I bought Corsair at, at, at 28 and it's 25. Should I cut my losses? Do you believe in it long term? Yeah. Then either buy more or sit on it. But these guys, and it's not their fault, but these guys aren't like you and I where we've been in the market for a decade or more. It, for them, a long time in the market is like three days. Stucky, I bought Gap. I know you said it's going to take a month for it to probably gap back up, but it's down right now. I fucking hate you. But first of all, I didn't tell you to buy it. And second of all, that's not the play. The play wasn't for today. The market does this up and down and up and down and up and down. Sometimes you buy up. Sometimes you buy down. Sometimes it goes up. Sometimes it goes down. Yeah, be okay, fam. I want you to... Here's what I want you guys to do. The next time you ask me about a stock, I want you to zoom out off of the day. Not on the week. Not on the month. I want you to zoom out to minimum a year. Stonks go up. Why am I still here? I panic sold today. Oh, God. Literally my first week doing this, I'm down 5% overall, but I'm learning so I don't feel bad. Can I ask you a question, dude? Um, what did you buy? 
in your first week and why did you buy it? I'm just very curious. I bought into Zoom expecting good off the earnings and I went negative 15%. Wow, okay. Um, I bought some retail expecting good things from Black Friday. Bought a few things off hype. Uh, we might still see good from Black Friday, Cyber Monday. We haven't uh, had the numbers yet. Number one. Number two, there's a lot of pain right now in the retail side because UPS is saying, hey, listen, we're not going to be able to deliver as much stuff as we thought we would. The real money, if you're playing earnings, guys, is always the run-up to earnings. That is where the money is at. Okay, options are tough because IV swings, but run up to earnings, especially if, if, if the market is bullish on something, selling before earnings, or what I like to do, my personal favorite, is to play the run up, sell half my position before the earnings, and let the other half ride. Because if you make 15 or 10% on the run up and you sell half and it drops 10% on earnings, you break even. If it drops 5%, you're still up 5%. If it goes up 20%, you're up 10% more than where you sold the other half at. So, you know, if you want a piece of the action, just protect yourself. That's why I use less than 1% of my portfolio on options. I enjoy having the, the thrill of it and having fun. But at the same time, uh, my ass ain't dumping my whole portfolio into some 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 crazy uh, degenerate play because I've been there, and I'd tell you right now, some of y'all might be finding some success, but in the end, if you keep do if you keep trying to play options and playing and playing uh, low cap stocks and pen pumps and pump and dumps and penny stocks, you're done for. You're gonna get ruined. You're gonna blow up your account. It's just a matter of time. So for those of you guys who are asking, Stocky, you always seem to be go up on your portfolio. Well, I mean, no, nah, I'm not always up. I have down days. I had a red day the other day. It happens. It's part of it's part of trading. But I swing trade equities. But remember, also for the most part. I don't let my emotions get involved. Walmart, I fucked up. I should have sold. I should have I should have sold. I just that was just dumb. I have to I, I fucked that up. So now I have to just kind of ride with it and see where it goes at this point. So this is where we're at today. You're only investing wait, you're only investing with $30,000? No, sir, this is my $10,000 challenge that I'm doing on the stream. I opened a brand new account with $10,000 in May. And this is a $10,000 challenge, okay? How much can I turn $10,000 into swing trading equities live on stream? Props to you, respect to you for showing your fuck ups. Well, you have to because, because I'm, not, I'm not lying to you to sell you anything. So what do I gain from, from hiding my fuck ups? It just shows you the, realist, the realism of, of trading. 